Good afternoon. Uh, this is our last endocrine video. Our next body system is the immune system. If you're following along in your notes, we're on the bottom of the hormones page. We'll be looking at thyroid stimulating hormone, thyroxine, feedback inhibition. Then we'll come back and hit cortisol and epinephrine. So I don't have to be a medical professional to know that this person's neck looks abnormal. And this is called goiter. Some of y'all might have already learned that in another class. Um, dissection picture coming up. This is what your trachea looks like with your thyroid, a normal thyroid wrapped around it. So if this is my trachea, then my thyroid, picture it kind of like a piece of tongue, sort of, and it just sort of wraps around this way. So most of it is back behind, and then a little bit of it kind of like peeks around the front like that. So this is a normal thyroid gland. If I was a medical professional, I might be able to tell the difference in my neck between just like muscle and flesh and stuff and like actual thyroid, but I can't. So how is it that you go from having a normal thyroid to goiter, a really enlarged thyroid gland, or as you can see in this guy's neck, that's actually an enlarged thyroid. So the way that it works is my brain, is gonna communicate with my thyroid gland. And then my thyroid gland is gonna manage my mitochondria. And you might remember mitochondria is the part of the cell that converts food energy into ATP energy. Most cell chemical reactions that require energy they, they run on ATP, not all of them. We saw that proton pumps don't, for example. But it, by and large, most cell processes run on ATP, just like most things in the world run on electricity. So the way that my brain communicates with my thyroid gland is with thyroid stimulating hormone. So my brain is basically saying, um, okay, we need to up our metabolism a little bit. It turns out that thyroid, um, the way that my thyroid is able to have an effect is it releases thyroxin. You might also see it called T4. So what thyroxin does is it basically manages my mitochondria and you know, thyroid hormone effects on mitochondrial energetics. This is a journal article, um, and it's an overview. And they basically go on to say that it determines, like, not just how your mitochondria run, but it can also tell your cells to make more mitochondria. It can also manipulate, like, um, how fast ATP synthase is working or exactly how it works. And um, some of the proteins in the inner membrane that crisp day of the mitochondria. So thyroxin can manipulate the mitochondria. So as a general rule, what we're gonna say, to keep it simple, is more thyroxine means my mitochondria is running faster, means I'm burning more calories. So my brain decides um, we, need to, we need to hit the go button. We need my mitochondria to run faster. And so it sends thyroid stimulating hormone to the thyroid. The thyroid will start making thyroxine that gets dumped into the bloodstream. And so it's eventually going to make it to the cells with mitochondria, but some of it's also going to feed back. This is a feedback loop. You might remember we have positive and negative feedback, a common theme in biology. And that's basically feeding back to my brain to say like, hey, you said make some thyroxine. And as you can see, I just did. It's almost like if I was saying, hey, I want to see, I want to see some more blue Expo pins around here. And then a little bit later, all of a sudden in the bloodstream, I start seeing more and more blue Expo pens. Then I'm like, cool, that's what I wanted. I wanted some blue Expo pens. Okay, cool. Now let's stop. We've made some blue Expo pens. That's enough. That's all I need. So this is a negative feedback loop because my product, thyroxine, will feed back and tell my brain to negative to stop making it. So then my brain will say, all right, we've got plenty of blue Expo pens, plenty of T4 circulating around in the blood. So now I kind of dial it down on my TSH. All right, thyroid, good job. You can take a little bit of a break. We're gonna have less and less and less. So instead of this much TSH, now we start kind of bringing it down. And that way we can kind of keep our metabolism sort of steady. Well, that's great. 
However, there's a potential problem. In order to make quality thyroxine, T4, you require iodine. Now, where do you and I get our iodine? You've probably seen um, salt, it'll say iodized salt. And that's because our, our salt is spiked with iodine. Now you can buy salt without iodine in it um, and pay extra, but um, we put iodine in our salt because otherwise out in nature, the common places to find iodine are in like uh, shrimp, um, crab, basically, um, you know, from, from the sea. And so if I live in Oklahoma and I didn't have grocery stores and everything else, it might be difficult for me to get adequate iodine. And so then I wouldn't be able to make proper thyroxine. Well, what's happening in this guy is just that. If he's low on iodine, for example, now he could have another reason that he has goiter. Let's assume that it's iodine deficiency. What will happen is your brain says, hey, I need to see some more thyroxine around here. Thyroid. I'm going to send out thyroid stimulating hormone. You start making some thyroxine. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Because I don't have any iodine, I can't make quality thyroxine. So my brain's like, you know, I, I don't see any. Back to my analogy, I'm not seeing the Blue Expo pins. Hey, make Blue Expo pins. I wait a while, there's no Blue Expo pins. Hey, make some Blue Expo pins. So I'm like, all right, thyroid, I told you. Make some more. No response. Thyroid, I told you. Make some more. No response. I'm not seeing any thyroxine in my bloodstream. So essentially, I'm just overworking my thyroid gland. And so eventually, it looks like this. In a typical situation, it works great. This negative feedback loop works perfectly. Negative feedback loops are when you're trying to keep something fairly steady. We saw tryptophan was an example of um, an operon in bacteria that can follow a negative feedback loop. I always have a steady amount. Usually, I want to keep my body temperature steady. So um, if my body temperature gets too high, I sweat to cool it off. If it gets too low, I shiver to bring it up. So sweat, shiver, sweat, shiver, and I keep my body temperature the same. This is how I would normally keep my metabolism the same. This is also if you've ever heard somebody say, hey, I have trouble losing weight due to a thyroid issue. That's possible because my thyroid governs how my mitochondria runs. Um, here's a picture of a lady before and after her goiter is removed. Um, obviously that's going to be uncomfortable. Supposedly it's not painful. But the nice thing about the thyroid is you can cut it off, the excess part, and then what's left behind, as long as you stitch it up and everything else, like it can then work okay. So now as long as she has access to iodine, she should be uh, okay, as long as there wasn't some sort of permanent damage from her goiter. Okay, the last part, um, it's likely that this video is fake. It's from a long time ago. It's, it's got audio. Again, I don't have audio because this doesn't have speakers. But um, if you go online and look for it, like it's supposed to be like a security video from like 15 years ago, but it's in color and it also has audio. So again, it's probably fake. But this brings up our next set of hormones, epinephrine and cortisol. This guy kind of pops up like a little mole back here. And with the audio, it's even better. It's giving that computer the what for. Here's another one. Again, I'm uh, kind of suspicious as to whether or not it's legit. And once again, it's the computer related. So I'll kind of talk while this one's playing. Um, the next hormones that we're looking at are cortisol and epinephrine. Epinephrine is what we commonly call adrenaline. So there's epinephrine, norepinephrine, adrenaline, noradrenaline. They're all related. And as you would know, adrenaline is, is um, amping you up. So now you're ready to fight or flight. The idea is if, um, if we think of where humans were say thousands of years ago, anytime you're stressed, then that generally means you have to fight or flight. You're not normally stuck in traffic. You're either running for your life or you're chasing prey um, or something like that. It's usually a physical thing. So I'll pause.
so we can see what happens here. Checking the ink cartridge. Seems all right, shoves it back in there. And again, somehow like a bunch of ink sprays on him. Again, might be fake, but this still uh, captures the essence of fight or flight. So here's this guy. This is in modern society with an old monitor. Fine, if you won't print this, I'll bring my screen over and put it on the copy machine and now you'll print it. After I dish out some abuse. So, what does that have to do with cortisol and epinephrine? Well, again, thousands of years ago, if all of a sudden there's um, you know, a lion or whatever, I need adrenaline. So that's gonna give me a quick boost of energy to go and take off. It's gonna up my heart rate, my breathing rate, everything else. But I'm also gonna need actual energy sources. So I also have the hormone cortisol. And cortisol basically is sort of saying like, hey, we need to take fat out of storage and dump it into our bloodstream because there's a bear or there's a lion we're gonna have to run. So adrenaline's like, you need to run. And then cortisol is like, all right, I got your back. Once your blood sugar's running low, we're dumping fat and blood sugar, or fat and sugar into our bloodstream so that you'll actually have energy to keep powering your legs because your muscles are gonna be out of juice pretty soon. Okay, now fast forward to it's 2020 and you're stuck in traffic. When you get stressed, your body still responds the same way. So you release epinephrine, you release cortisol, and this is how stress kills. So I'm in traffic, and I'm just sitting there doing nothing. And my body is releasing adrenaline. It's like, go, 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 go. You know, or somebody cuts me off. And then the next thing you know, you're like, your body's like, you know, you should get out and punch that person. You should punch him. You should punch him. You should punch him. And the next thing you know, you're like stepping out of your car. There's an old lady and you know what I mean? So hopefully not. Um, hopefully you don't know what I mean. Um, so with adrenaline, your, your body is wanting you to fight or flight. So run and flee or stay and fight. But at the same time, if I'm just, if I hate my job, if I'm sitting in a computer and it's just ticking me off all the time, I hate it, then my body is background just kind of giving me a little dose of adrenaline. I'm on edge and it's dumping fat into my bloodstream cortisol. Well, if I'm exercising, I'm burning that fat, I'm burning that energy, so it's fine. But if I'm stuck in traffic or stuck at my computer at some job I hate, then stress kills. That's how it's gonna cause a heart attack. Um, so that's why if you have a particularly stressful job, then you, you need to, to exercise. Um, it's kind of weird because of, um, epinephrine is used for multiple things. It's also a, a neurotransmitter, but yeah. Uh, that's it for hormones. Thank you very much.